On the previous video, we have completed a full setup of a MySQL NLB cluster. So now I'd like to challenge the cluster and test the failover of it. In other words, check the high availability in action. But first, let me show you the router doing the transport routing which I've talked about. So let's start the MySQL shell. Let's first establish a connection to the router read-only port, which is running on 6447. So every session established to this address of the router will be automatically redirected to one of the read-only instances of the cluster. So let's verify that by switching to SQL mode and running a simple select hostname query. As you can see, the hostname we're connected to is one of the read-only instances, which is IC3. Okay, so now let's do the same for the read-write port of the, of the router, which is running on localhost 6446. Let's execute again the same statement, the select hostname. And let's verify that we have been routed to the primary instance of our cluster, which accepts reads and writes the host IC1. Okay, so if it's, we've seen the router in action, so let's move on and see the whole LinoDB cluster surviving and acting accordingly after the crash of one of the instances. To simulate a crash, I will log in into the primary instance of the cluster and shut down the server. So I'll SSH into the instance and shut down the MySQL service by running sudo service mysql stop. Let's wait a few seconds for the MySQL server to be shut down. Okay, and now that the primary instance is offline, a new primary should have been automatically elected. To confirm that, let's execute again the same select to see which host we are now connected to. Okay, as you can see, the select fails since the connection to the original primary was lost but MySQL shell automatically reconnects for us and we simply have to execute the command again. Okay, we got IC2. This shows us that the InnoDB cluster provided us with automatic failover that the MySQL router has automatically reconnected to us to the new primary instance, IC2, and so we have high availability. But what is the current status of the cluster now? Let's recheck. Let's switch to JS mode. And then let's obtain the cluster object by doing the following dba.getCluster and assign it to a variable. And let's execute the cluster status. As you can see, the status output is a bit different now. A new primary instance has been elected, IC2, and the one I've shut down, IC1, is now with a missing status. This, this means that um, the instance is still registered on our cluster, but is currently not active, is offline. Also notice that status text changed a bit. It's now indicating us that the cluster is not tolerant to any failures, so one, because one member is not active. However, the cluster is still up and running and able to execute any read-write or read-only query. Now to finish, let's get our instance back online and watch it rejoin the cluster automatically. For that, I'll go again to the IC1 host, which was the one that I shut down the MySQL server, and I'll restart the MySQL server by doing the following. Let's wait a few seconds. Okay, it's done. So now let's execute again the cluster status, and we can verify that our instance IC1 automatically rejoined the cluster, is now online, it's read-only, because the new elected primary is IC2, and also the status text changed a bit and now it's telling us that the cluster is online and can tolerate up to one failure. And as you can see this is very easy and we have our cluster up and running and it can withstand up to one failure. And with this we finish our hands-on tutorial and we should be now be able to ex easily and quickly get started with MySQL in ODB cluster. Thank you for using MySQL. Mm -hmm.